A new film is out about these Iranian protests and the death of one of the protesters, which became a symbol across the globe. The Iranian of the Iranian government's oppression. Chris spoke with the filmmaker Anthony Thomas and, and a former CNN correspondent Rudy Bakhtiar about the film and asked what they were trying to accomplish. Uh, Neda is a symbol, but she's also a living human being, and I wanted a film which would really get right inside her life, tell us who she was, tell us about her, what she was doing when she died, why did she die, what was she fighting for. Also, I felt this was an important opportunity to make a very strong statement about the status of women and the treatment of women in Iran. And I also felt it was a time to revisit June and July and to really clearly set out what happened in the lead up to those elections and subsequently. Those are the aims. Yeah. Well, I think, I think you accomplished those. Thank uh, you. Uh, Rudy, tell me, uh, why do you think Netta became such a symbol? Well, several reasons. Uh, first reason was that uh, her video, uh, all of a sudden, in a matter of uh, hours, was seen by everyone all over the world. Uh, those dying eyes, Neda's dying eyes, represent hundreds of kids inside of Iran who have struggled for freedom and democracy and their rights and have died, but we've never seen them die. And uh, Neda was there that day uh, to fight for the right of her votes, uh, the votes of actually her family who had gone to vote. And she had not been able to vote that day. And uh, what was very important was the fact that this girl could be any girl. This is a girl, when Anthony did the, 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 the documentary, you see her bedroom could have been a, a bedroom of any young girl. The books she was reading, Wuthering Heights, Siddhartha, are books that all of us have read as young girls. So it really humanized her, but it also showed what the women in Iran are, are trying to achieve for themselves. This struggle for equal rights in Iran started the day this Islamic government took power. The first thing they did was strip the women of their rights. The Nobel laureate Shirin Ebadi, who was the first female judge in Iran, was uh, taken down from her position and turned into a secretary. So this is a struggle that has been long going on inside of Iran, and this young girl unwittingly became the symbol of it. One of the things that is striking, uh, Anthony, in the film is how much she is like a, a, a typical young lady uh, with Millions like nice young young things and anyway. dresses yeah. and yeah, absolutely. Um, and not, does not come across as terribly ideological or political. Not at all, not at all. She was, uh, uh, you know, she went to the gym regularly, she cared about what she wore, she wore the coolest, latest fashions and all the rest of it. But in one respect, I think she was unique in her incredible courage and strength. And how many of those millions of other young girls would have done what she did, I don't know. Uh, you got extraordinary access to her family, her, right, yeah. her parents and her sister and her brother. Mm -hmm. uh, how did you do that? Well, it was uh, very much Rudy had a big hand in that. Um, she talked to the family, she was in touch with the family, and, they, um, and she told them that she could trust me. Uh, it, sadly, it was impossible for me to go inside Iran because uh, all foreign journalists are refused visas and anyone who looks like me who would have just wandered into the apartment of the family would have been putting everyone in, at risk including myself but particularly the family and we found a remarkable young Iranian journalist a boy of 24 who was actually the first person to discover what Neda's family name was and where she lived and he um, agreed to take the huge risk of going in there and filming with the family. We gave them a crash course in uh, camera technique and in film technique, and, but the important thing was not technique, it was that he earned the trust of the family. And um, it's quite remarkable what he achieved. And that is the core of the film. Um, the family is quite outspoken, Very about, outspoken. about the regime mm -hmm. and about uh, uh, the brutality that was going on against uh, the demonstrators yeah. and of course against, uh, um, against Netta herself. Um, are you concerned at all? They're still in Iran, correct? They're still in Iran. Uh, are you concerned about their security? It will always be a concern. Um, the family believe, and many people, uh, many Iranians that I've talked to about this believe that by the more public you are, the safer you are, this regime, regardless of its behavior, still has this curious concern that it should be regarded as uh, 
uh, a legitimate regime, a law-abiding regime, and a lot of people feel that they wouldn't dare to touch the family. I hope that judgment is right, but it remains a risk. Um, one of the other things that comes through very clearly in the film is the role of, of citizen journalism, yeah. of uh, people taking videos with cell phones. In fact, the video of Netta's death yeah. itself was mm. captured on a cell phone video. Two um, cell phones. Two videos. cell phones. Yes. Um, is that, do you think that uh, the world would have seen what the world saw without that? I mean, one of our interviewees says that this is a, an important new chapter in, 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 in world history, and I think he's right. I think that uh, you can't build Berlin walls anymore. You can't keep people outside not knowing what's happening inside, and people inside not being influenced by ideas that are coming from, from outside. And I think the days, are, I mean, North Korea can sort of just keep those borders down, but I think it's becoming very difficult for a country that uses the internet, that has an educated population, highly educated population like the Iranian population, to just keep the lid on the free exchange of information and ideas. And it's significant because they have, and you'll bear me out, Rudy, there have been terrible massacres in the past in Iran during the period of the Islamic Republic, and none of that has even got out. We don't know about it. But this, this time, we do know. This government is spending a lot of money trying to jam satellite technology, trying to um, uh, 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 not allow people to be able to use the internet. They were completely checkmated by technology this time around. It had never happened to them before. As Anthony says, yes, many people have been killed over the past 30 years. Ten years ago, Tehran University was attacked. Several students were killed then, but there was no footage of it. And uh, the idea that now, uh, whatever they do, can be captured on video, it, it, it it is also a great tribute to the people of Iran, to the tremendous courage of the people of Iran, knowing that every time they hold up that cell phone, they can be arrested. Many were arrested just because they were holding up a cell phone. And the fact that they continue to hold up those cell phones and continue to find ways to get that, uh, those visuals out is really shows how, uh, how brave they are and how dedicated they are to freeing their country and finding democracy for their country. Now, the, um, uh, it, w one of the things that I think I wonder about, and a lot of people wonder about now, is whether the Green Movement is still alive. Because, of course, there's been a lot of repression. People have been arrested. People have been executed. Um, is it still alive, do you think, Rudy? Well, uh, the Green Movement is something that uh, we, we are calling it lately. I, I again want to stress that this movement for equal rights for women began the day after the, this government took power. Uh, the people of Iran are struggling for several reasons because Iran has now become the number one country per capita, per head of the number of executions per year. That number quadrupled under Ahmadinejad's reign. Iran is the number one country when it comes to journalists in prison. One third of the world's journalists that are in prison are in a prison inside of Iran. Iran is still one of the few countries that executes juvenile offenders. And juvenile offenders can be as young as eight uh, for a girl in Iran and as young as 15 for a boy. They wait till they come of age and they kill them. So there are several issues that are at play here and several things that the Iranian people want to change. And the most important thing is, is when you go there, the students will tell you, we are a rich nation. We could be a, an energy superpower. Why am I, a student who's about to graduate, going to be broke and jobless? Why is inflation in the high 20s? Why is unemployment in the high 20s? These are some real economic problems that this government, Ahmadinejad in particular, has not delivered on. So until they get what they want, which was why they, were, they revolted in the first place 31 years ago, they will keep fighting for their rights. One of the things, though, I think last summer we felt that the regime's grip on power was, was potentially at risk and that they might lose control of the situation altogether. And it does appear, anyway, that, they've, that they have managed to reassert their control over the streets. They definitely have, using great force. But what you saw happen last year was the fact that the Supreme Leader's position is now much disputed. Uh, you had the Supreme Leader 
on the holiest day of the week, uh, after much tumult and death in his country, go on Friday prayers, which is their Sunday, and talk about if you come out tomorrow, there will be bloodshed. And he delivered on that. And Neda is a result of that, which is also why she became so important. Her death sentence was signed by the supreme leader of Iran. And for the first time in 31 years, you heard people chanting something they never, ever dared to chant before, death to Khamenei. They have actually challenged Velayat Safari, his position. And that is the basis of the Islamic Republic. So they are right now in control. But there is a lot brewing underneath, because this is not what the people want. This is not Islam. Right. Anthony, when uh, when does the film when does the film broadcast? It opens here on the 14th of June, which is at nine o'clock on HBO, and then importantly, it's repeated on the 20th, which is the day of Neda's murder, the one year anniversary of Neda's murder. Very good. Well, good luck with it. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you.